An agency that was already struggling before the virus is doing even worse now. The United States Postal Service was in the headlines a lot during the early months of the pandemic in the 2020 election. And the postal workers I talked to believe they can handle a surge. From many Americans choosing mail-in ballots. A new CNN poll shows that 10% more Americans plan to cast their ballot by mail as compared to 2016. And then President Trump's feelings about that. Take a look at West Virginia, mailmen selling the ballots. They're being sold. They're being dumped in rivers. To the appointment of Louis DeJoy in June 2020. I encourage all Americans who choose to vote by mail to request their ballots early and to vote early. And the delay is partially caused by his policies. The normally non-controversial government body is under increased scrutiny. President Biden is facing a lot of pressure from congressional Democrats to make rapid and forceful changes. For a large group of Democrats, that starts with getting rid of the Postmaster General. How much longer are you planning to stay? A uh, long time. Get used to me. And the way you do that is to appoint a bunch of new folks to the Board of Governors uh, until you have the votes to get rid of them. The Postal Service's Board of Governors is nine members appointed by the president, confirmed by a simple majority at the Senate. They run the Postal Service like a board of directors runs a private company. The Postal Service is an agency of the federal government, but it's also supposed to be this independent entity. Of the nine seats, three spots are currently vacant. Biden's nominees have gone through a Senate hearing and are awaiting their confirmation votes. The first is Ron Stroman. He's a Democrat. He's the recently retired Deputy Postmaster General. He led the Biden transition team's agency review team for the Postal Service. The second is Anton Hajar. He's the former general counsel to the American Postal Workers Union. And the third is Amber McReynolds, who's a political independent, and she's the chief executive of the National Vote at Home Institute, dedicating her life to voter access. And it, it signals the president's desire to leverage the Postal Service and making it easier for people to vote. Expanding voting rights could just be one priority of the new board if these three nominees are confirmed. But even if all three of Biden's nominees wanted to oust a joy, it might not be that simple. Of the six members of the Board of Governors, four are Republicans, two are Democrats. The chair of the Board of Governors, Ron Bloom, is a Democrat, but has come out strongly in support of the Postmaster General and basically said, he's my guy and I don't anticipate him losing my support. And so that would mean they still would not have the votes. Biden's nominees were clear about the need to improve service and restore public trust in the post office, given the delivery challenges to Joy's reforms seemed to create. At one point, Ron Stroman, one of the more experienced folks, said the commitment to service starts at the top of the organization. It starts, it seems to me, with uh, having a plan to ensure that you have great service. That starts from the top of the organization and filters down throughout the organization. Which was kind of a veiled shot at the Postmaster General. We must acknowledge that during this peak season, we fell far short of meeting our service targets. Ousting Louis DeJoy isn't the only reform Democrats are calling for. Some see the potential for the post office to do more than just deliver the mail on time. The post, post service has 30,000 locations all across the country. And each of these locations can serve as a public, nonprofit bank, bringing low-cost banking services to every community in the country. The Postal Service has a great opportunity here to take the lead in combating uh, climate change. And that's by uh, moving away from uh, combustion, and internal combustion engines and the emissions they produce, and by investing in, in a fleet that's more of an electric fleet. What do we want the Postal Service to be in the 21st century? We're entering a period where everything is testing our assumptions. At a very basic level, there are folks who say step one is solving the financial losses and solving the service crisis. You know, there are some people who would phrase that question on do you manage the Postal Service's decline or do you reimagine this agency?